Hi guys, I am Nutrix the Slim Guy and today is part two of Synthesis 101 videos. In this series of video, I talk about the different aspect of what synth are and how they're built and what makes a synthesizer. So basic stuff about getting around, you know, starting making your own sound. So today we're going to talk about oscillators. What are they? How does it work? Why would one sound different than the other? That's a question I get often. Actually, I got it last uh, month when I bought when I bought this Waldorf scent, and somebody told me, "What well, you already have synthesizer? Why is this different than the others?" Well, there's many reasons why a synthesizer sound the way it sounds. We'll talk about that. I mean, today we'll talk about the oscillator or the oscillators because they might have more than one. They have their own sound. And not because it's... Sometimes we think that synthesizers, like other types of devices, when you look at the specification sheets, you look at them and you go, well, it's the same sound. Well, no. Not because you've got the same values that you'll get the same result. And the, the oscillator and the filters are probably the two parts that are the most noticeable in the signature of the synthesizer. So today, oscillators. What are they? How do they work? Well, the oscillator is the raw sound that you work with. You are going to sculpt that sound using envelopes, filters, LFOs, and all that. So, and even the oscillator itself can change depending on the parameters you have in there. So what are the shapes we see? Well, most of the synthesizer you'll have sawtooth, square wave, sine wave, triangular wave, and then you've got a mix of these things to create some type of interesting. Now, all of these waves are called the way they are because that's honestly the shape they have when you look at them on an oscilloscope screen. One of the easiest ways to look at them and understand the differences is actually play with Xeon app because you have this little screen here when you actually see the shape of the sound. So that's gonna be the first thing we'll try together. I'll show you how they sound like, and then I'll talk about other synthesizers because depending on the synthesizer you work with, they all have their little differences. And to be honest, when we say square wave, no two synthesizers have the same shape of square. So they have a different sound. We need to go back, to understand this clearly, you need to go back to understanding that the sound has three parts that we really want to get to control when you use a synthesizer. You have the speed, or what we call the pitch, the note. How fast is the oscillating oscillator going? Well, that's how fast the speed is, and that's how high or low the pitch is. So, speed of oscillation equals note or pitch. Second part is the amplitude. How loud is the movement? How away from neutral value, which equals no sound, how away from it, the amplitude of movement equals volume. So amplifier, amplitude, volume, fine. Third one, which is the one that is really important with the, the pitch, is the shape of the sound. So when I say shape, I go back to the notion of square wave, sawtooth, sine wave, and etc. The shape of the oscillator will dictate the harmonic or inharmonic content of the sound. It will actually dictate how many frequencies you have and where they're situated. A sawtooth will have a certain amount of frequencies at certain places. A square wave will have less frequencies than a sawtooth. It will be odd harmonics. And a sine wave will have only one frequency of a fundamental and a triangular will have a fundamental and a couple of other frequencies a noise will have everything the frequencies are harmonics and inharmonics so it's going to be just a noise and all of these notions are part of it but also keep in mind that if you have two square waves from two different synthesizers they do not have the same shape we say square but not exactly the same square so they don't have exactly the same harmonic content so they don't sound the same 
that's it. That's where the first part of why a synthesizer sounds different than the other one is the raw sound you work with, the oscillator. Then you combine them together. When you combine them together, there's different ways to do it. You mix them, you multiply, you add them up, you, you know, modify them. You, one is a modulator, one receives the modulation, and then it creates all type of other harmonics and inharmonics that comes into play. So the way you combine them is also very important in how you start the sound, the raw you know, sound you work with. Then the rest of the synthesizer will be about sculpting that. Opening and closing the filter will be the big part of the rest of the synthesis. So let's look at how does a shape sounds like. I'm gonna go triangular wave, triangular wave. So I don't have a lot of harmonics. I've got most of the fundamental and a couple of other harmonics. Now, if I actually bring this back to the sawtooth, that, that is actually the richest possible shape for harmonic content. So if you've got the fundamental and every multiplication of the fundamental, so twice the speed of the fundamental, three times the speed, four times the speed, five times, and all of that. So it creates a really rich, really rich sound that you can play with. get into the square wave we go well, it's not square you're right square waves in analog synthesis are really square they're most of them are squarish if you want real absolute square waves are digital sound most of the time and they have their own sound they don't sound like analog synthesizers because they're squarish you know so if you look at this square wave and then there's something special about the square wave the square wave has pulse width modulation. It means that you can change the width of the impulse. The length of the whole note will be the same, but the top part and the bottom part will change. One will be large, one will be small, and it will change the sound because by changing the shape, you change the harmonic content. So I go here, PW is for pulse width. So then you've got in this case, you've got direct current. It's a direct signal. Then go one impulse again. Very nasal, small sound, and then you go. Same thing on the other side. This is what an oscillator is. Uh, of course, there's many other options of different 
wave generators. And then they're not, in my book, they're not oscillators, they're wave generators. They could be wavetables, they could be just sample playback. They're gonna be a whole different world of things to do. And actually, I'll talk a bit more about it with this beast here. This beast has wavetable, if I'm not mistaken. So soon, I'll explain also what a wavetable synth is about. That's it. I hope this is actually helpful for you guys. And again, if you got any question, write them down in the comments. If you got any comments, well, you know where to put them. If you like what I'm doing, thumb up. If you've got suggestion or question about other things you can talk about, write them in the comments. And that's it, guys. See you soon.